Welcome to the November 6, 2015 edition of Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the Denver Police Union filing a lawsuit this week against the department over the implementation of its new body camera program. The union claims the development of the program that will be implemented later this month is illegal, citing, to failure, uh, citing failure to acknowledge collective bargaining rules. Patty Cahoon from Westward. So it's important for us to note here that the, the police union is coming out saying that they're not against body cameras per se. It was how the change came across. I'm not sure if that's going to play well in the court of public opinion, but as this came out, what do you think? Well, that's like you know, saying um, we, didn't di we didn't discuss whether or not you have to carry a gun. The tools of the trade are not really part of collective bargaining, it seems to me. Hours, conditions of work, but the tools of good policing are really belong to the police department officials who are making the decisions. You know, we understand that it's fun not having cameras on all the time. Certainly we have more fun at this <laughs> table when the cameras are not on. We can imagine in Colorado Springs, the cops that failed to come to the site of that horrible shooting probably don't want the cameras to reveal they were eating donuts or something. But it's a really good tool from all evidence in, and there have been studies across the country on policing. That should be a department decision. There are other issues that are part of collective bargaining, but the tools of the job do not seem to be one of them. Amy Oliver Cook, the executive vice president over the Independence Institute, thanks for joining us. Um, now, with law enforcement's in a tough position here, but I think when the headlines come out that the police union is against the body camera program, Again, not against the body camera program, but they're suing because of, because of how it is implemented. That detail is going to be lost on a community that I think, really, even if you support police, you want to see body cameras because that might even prove false accusations of, of brutality. Uh, is the police union really stuck in a pickle here? Well, first of all, the idea, hiding behind a collective bargaining agreement on this, I'm like, Pat, I mean, give me a break. It, and actually, most law enforcement Body cameras don't, I mean, they are not bothered by it. You know why? Because a lot of times what happens when somebody self, when they do a, when they, when they're filming police, they are doing it at a moment where it's of escalation. Nobody has seen all the crap that leads up to mm -hmm. that point. So body cameras for most law enforcement are, they're supportive of it. What, what I think um, the police union in this case is going to lose, they don't like the process. <laughs> You're going to lose in, in public opinion. People want the body cameras, and frankly, there are a lot of members of law enforcement that are fine with the body cameras as well. You saw it in the state legislature. They're fine with it because they get to tape an entire incident, not just a few moments that ends up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Penfield Tate is with us, uh, attorney with QTAC Rock, also a long-time state lawmaker. Uh, did the police union do something they had to do to defend their members, or is this just the wrong play here? You never have to do something silly. Um, <laughs> it, it, the, and and I, I appreciate what they're saying, but they're exalting form over substance. The reality is, is there's a huge, overwhelming cry for the use of these body cameras. Um, even the individual officers will tell you they want them. And, and I found the logic weird. I, the, the union was saying the cameras are a piece of safety equipment, therefore they're subject to the collective bargaining agreement. I think most of the people in the public think the cameras are a piece of safety equipment to protect the public, not necessarily just the officer. Uh, so they really, the, you know, the most intelligent diplomatic thing they can do is basically say, you know, our bad, we're sorry, let's do it, we're, we're suspending this challenge, let's just roll it out and get going. And if we want to talk over time about how the policy is implemented, what we do, that's another thing. But they need to quit stalling this and just let it, they, they need to concede. Kara Deget, editor of the Greater Park Hill News, wrap it up for us. Well, I would think that the uh, most people would consider this lawsuit pretty brazen, considering um, the troubles, the multitudes of troubles that the Denver Police Department and the Sheriff's uh, Department have um, encountered over the last, you know, several years. Just since 2011, uh, taxpayers have shelled out in the ballpark of. Twelve million dollars for, um, you know, in excessive uh, excessive force cases, and 
um, you know, other problems involving um, the force and the sheriff's department. And, and so I, I'm just a little bit befuddled why, um, why the police union would even, you know, would even try and consider this and go forward with it. Pretty brazen. Yeah, brazen indeed. That's all the time we have for Colorado Winsile Post Game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.